Good morning, Globe Hoppers. Today we are in the capital city of Rabat, and it is a beautiful day out here today. And the plan for this video is we're gonna take you guys around and show you guys the main tourist attractions, the sites that you can't miss while you're here in Rabat. We've been here for two days and we haven't really done much. We spent my birthday, just went out to dinner, and then yesterday we did some work on the computers and relaxed, did a hookah. But now we're ready to go out and explore. And I tell you, compared to Casablanca, we really love the vibe in this little town, city, I guess I should say. And the temperature. <laughs> yeah, temperature's much cooler than Marrakesh. It's about 80 today, as opposed to 110 in Marrakesh, so we're enjoying that. And like I said, we spent the last day here and we went out last night and the vibe was just so nice here. It's a very clean city. There's a lot of security. It's a very safe city. So overall, We've been enjoying it and we hope you guys do. So come along and let's check it out. <clears throat> okay, so this first stop is called the Chela or the Shelia. And it is a Muslim fortified area that originally was built by the Phoenicians as a trading post. And now there's supposedly some gardens you can walk through here and get a little taste of history. So we're gonna head on in and see what we can figure out about this place. looks pretty nice all right so we got tickets it was 19 dollars to get in that includes one audio guide and two entrance tickets so here we go the audio guide is basically just telling me that one side is older than the other and that as we walk through the grounds here we're going to see a whole variety of moroccan history dating back to arabic times french times and then some modern times and to enjoy the tranquility and the greenness of it. There are a lot of gardens in here. And it also explained that because the river is right there, that's why they chose this site to build it back in the day because they can get water and they were protected by the water. So there you go. All right, so we just realized that you might not need to buy the audio guide because everything that they're saying to me in the ear, she is reading on the plaques. It does have a lot of plaques and they're all well you know written it's all in english so you can tell what's going on in each stop so if you don't want to spend the extra little bit of money to get the audio guide you really won't need it everything's here on the plaque <laughs> it's amazing how there's just so many different eras of time being represented here just in this one site you can see the ancient ancient then you got newer down there you can see that door a little bit that's even newer you got these from the 1400s and all of them have these big bird nests on top and <laughs> look at that one <laughs> damn that's a big nest okay so if you guys are into ruins and renovation sites this should definitely be on your list and it's definitely worthy of its um, UNESCO heritage status. So check it out if you're into that kind of thing. I was impressed by how many different time periods they've discovered in here. And also a little nod to the government here. They've done a wonderful job of keeping this place up, keeping it green. The gardens in there were absolutely beautiful and peaceful and thank God for the shade. <laughs> so yeah, not a bad stop. Like I said, it was $7 each and then the, the um, audio guide, which you really don't need. So everything was written out on plaques. You could have just walked around and read it all if you wanted to. But if you like to listen to an audio guide, go ahead and get it. It was worth it to check this place out. So all right, guys, our next stop is at the Husan Tower and the Husan the Fifth Mosque. Now, I'll give you a little more history once we get in, but check these guys out up front here. How cool is that, guys? I love it. So I'm going to give you guys a quick little history lesson. Over here we've got the Husan Tower, which was originally part of a mosque that was never completed. So you can't go up in it or anything, but it is a monument. It's seen from all over the city at night. They light it up. I think we have pictures of it we might put in here. But yeah, it's very beautiful. And then on this side, you've got King Hussein's Mausoleum. Look at all the people in there. So Rabat has got a lot going on. As you can see, there's construction going on. You got your promenades down here along the riverway, heading out to the beaches over there. 
you got all the marina and all these new buildings behind us you got the mosque and all that the big tower and everything's over here and there's just so much going on it's very clean and like i said i think the reason a lot of this is because not only is it the capital but the king lives here this is his permanent home although he has homes all over the country pretty much one in every city they said this is his main residence here so i think it gets a little special attention but you can definitely feel the vibe is different here than any place else we've been so far in morocco and i like it it's yeah. definitely a, a modern yet historical vibe to it it's really cool the and police force the, i feel like the police presence makes you feel good and i really like how green it is this is the greenest place we've seen in all of morocco so far i mean it is a desert mostly but to have this much green and this much trees and gardens i really like it here well maintained yes so it's more of a local kind of market there's actual clothing we got some drink stands snacks, snacks. and i see some fruit juices over here Oh, that smells good. So we walked through the market there and behind me on this side is where our apartment is because we're staying in the old Medina here. So we'll show you our Riyadh later on when we get back. But across the street from us, on this side we've got a Kasbah with the Andalusian Gardens on the inside. So we're going to take you guys through there now. And then straight across the street here we've got the, the beach area. And there's a promenade that goes along with that comes to life at night. So we're going to save that for a little bit later this evening. Right now we're going to head across the street and go check out the gardens. You ready? I'm ready. Alright, let's, let's get across here. Sure. Yeah, let's follow the locals. Oh, that wasn't bad. There is no dog of the day here, people. It's all about the cats. Cats are just everywhere in Morocco. It does look a little like Santorini. <laughs> The sun is blazing out here, so it's time for a little ice cream. Got me an Oreo bar. What'd you get? Exotic. Exotic, huh? It's like mango passion fruit creamsicle. Mm. This is delicious. So as you come out of those white streets that we were just walking through, we got the ice cream there. And you come out here for the view. Oh my goodness, look at this. How is that for an amazing view guys? Look at this. Beach life in Morocco. So the streets inside the Casbah are surrounded by all these white buildings and it's just touristy stuff. You got your magnets, souvenir shops and some juice stands and stuff. But the prize is at the end. It's definitely worth coming in here just to go get that view of the beaches and stuff. You can see the whole city from here too. It's definitely a great, great place to check out the view. But seriously, we haven't tried a pineapple here yet. Us? Us? Yes. Yes. We haven't had a pineapple here yet, but we are definitely looking forward to this. Have you tried it? No, here oh, we go. Oh, well, come on. We got to tell these boys how good they are. Thank you. Shakran. Oh, that's so good. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. delicious. Very delicious. good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. What did he give you? 20 back? 20. Yeah. So it was 30. So that was three dollars for that little cup of juice. But that is so fresh and so good. Mm. And of course, can't can't help but loving to support two little guys that age running their yeah. own business over there. They got their blend in it, they're just hustling, I love it. Alright, let's go find these gardens now. Here's what we were talking about before about why you can feel so safe here. It's because of all this police presence. They're everywhere. They got tourist police here. 
They got military police everywhere. So what we did was we took a taxi this morning to the furthest possible thing that we wanted to see. And then we basically walked almost the whole way back. Um, it's a very walkable city. The, if you're crossing the streets, they will stop for you. They're not going to hit you here. It's not crazy madness like Egypt. So we felt real safe walking around. And everybody's out doing it. This is the peak heat of the day. And everybody's just hanging out, walking around. And um, definitely, if you can walk, do it. It's really a lot of fun in the city. I love this place so far. It's very nice here. I think of all the cities we've been to. We've been to four cities now in Morocco. I think this is my favorite. For sure. I even like it better than the beach town of Agadir, to be honest with you. All right, maybe in here we'll find these gardens. Look at that door. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, so we made it to the Andalusian Gardens, and wow, what a temperature difference in here. The shade makes it so much cooler. And there's a little breeze, so let's come up top here, see if we can get a view for you guys. But just look at this. I see a lot of Instagram spots here. People just stopping and doing their posing and stuff. But look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. All right, so you got the Casbah and the gardens here, one big place all together, and it's completely free, no charge, no nothing to get in, just show up and enjoy. And the beach is also free, the promenade is free, the mosque that we went to, uh, the mausoleum and the tower, all that was free. We did have to pay for the first place that we went to this morning, but other than that, everything else has been free today. So I'm really enjoying this place. It's awesome. Now, let's see. Is that it, babe? All right, we got one more thing we wanted to show you guys today, and that is the promenade tonight. But we want to do that when it comes to life later. So we're going to go back to our room right now, settle in, take a shower, cool off a little bit, and then we'll see you guys tonight when we get down by the water. All right, guys, we're back. And before we head out for the night, I just wanted to take you guys on a quick little walk through our rehab. There's the front door. Here's the little courtyard in the center. We got a central room over there where everybody just hangs out. This is where they serve us breakfast each morning. That's someone else's room there. And this is our room here. There's a little kitchen area over here. That's where they make us breakfast every day. There's a common room over here, which is like a bathroom and laundry machine. Which, by the way, they did our laundry for us today for free, which is an awesome little bonus here. And now here's our room here. We got a little bedroom here. We've been working our butt off, so it's kind of a mess, but it's got a decent sized bed, a couple fans, some art on the wall. And then we got a little couch over here, all our stuff. There is extra storage up there, but I don't know what for. We can't reach up there. And here's our bathroom. Nothing too fancy, but it does the trick. We pay 30 a night for it, which isn't too bad. So that's about that. We're going to head out now, and we'll see you guys down by the promenade. When we arrived, this is the first view we got of Rabat. It was such an iconic shot. Check this out. You got the old Casbah here, the big tall skyscraper, the beach. Just incredible view right here. So that is where we're headed. We are going to head over there right now and have ourselves some dinner and enjoy the promenade at night. Take you guys with us. Wow, the beach is pretty kicking still over there. The temperature's cooled down now. It's reasonable, especially not in the sun. It's, it feels like it's about 80 now outside the sun, which is not too bad. So the promenade starts right here by the wall to the Casbah. And then as you can see, it goes down about, I'd say about a quarter of a mile at least down this way. And the vibe changes the further down you go. You got fishermen here, then you got a restaurant on in the water on this boat. And then all the way down, you'll see as we walk, there's different things going on. So let's head that way and show you guys what it's like before we grab something to eat. Stop, stop, stop. 
You could get run over here. <laughs> What's going on, brother? How much is the corn? Sank, ten. Ten? ten. Five. Which one? Wow. That one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> All right, my French is getting a little better, but not yet. <laughs> oh. You see? You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Merci. All right, so we got a little snack to hold us over while we head to dinner. Now, I was going to tell you guys that on this side of the river, you've got the, you got the Medina over here and the old market. And this strip here is pretty much like a carnival atmosphere over here with the kids and all that. Now, on the other side of the river there, those are all newer hotels and a little bit fancier restaurants over there. And the way to get over there is you go down this little platform, just walk on, hop on a boat, and for 50 cents, 25 cents each, we're over on the other side in like three minutes. That's what we're about to do after we enjoy this corn. How is it? Um, bizarre. Bizarre, she bizarre. says. All right, let's try some bizarre corn. Never heard corn described as bizarre, so let's the see. The texture, I don't know. Oh, I know what she's talking about. It's not fresh. This is old corn. It's not even moist anymore. So that's why you're saying it's bizarre. Okay. I could still eat it. It still tastes good. It's got good flavor, but the texture is very dry and chewy. Like, like. it it's, fell right off the cob. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what she meant. But it is full of salt, which I've been craving right now so bad. So we'll eat this while we catch a boat. We'll take you guys to the other side with us, all right? Right, we made it on our little boat. Now he's gonna take that little ride straight over there. Yeah, yeah. All right, so just like that, two minute row, you're across, you're in the quieter area now, and that was 25 cents each. Pretty fun. Yeah. Bit thinkier on this side. You can tell this is the fishing area right here. It's it definitely got the smell of fish over here. And these guys over here are the guys who fix all the boats. We've been watching them, especially over here. They were grinding away and sanding them down yesterday. And that's where we were this morning. We were over there. We were way past there. We were down there. It's been a big, big day today. We've taken you guys all over, Robot. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as we have. This city is really becoming one of our favorite in Morocco for sure. And I've probably said that like three times in this video, so you know I mean it. <laughs> so our plan now is we're going to walk along this strip to those restaurants over there. And we're going to find one that has a salad for her and a tagine for me. I feel like I've had just nothing but meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes, which I don't mind. Yeah. But I feel like my body is missing something right now. You know, we were saying before we left, we're both exhausted right now because for the five days before we left on this trip, we were just running like mad. We finished our assignment, we came home, and we had so much to do to get ready for the trip that we just exhausted ourselves. And then once we left on the trip, we went to London and we were like, oh no, we've only got four days. So we just went crazy doing everything we could for four days. Then we came here, our buddy came over to visit. So for the next seven days, we just went nuts again and hadn't stopped. I mean, we were doing 16 hour tours and stuff like that. Every day we were out till like 12 o'clock at night, getting up like at four in the morning to go on a tour the next day. It was crazy. I feel like we should mention it's also, when we went to London, it was like a heat wave. It was like 90 uh -huh. Fahrenheit, 95 Fahrenheit. We're dealing and, with uh, hundred pluses here. Yeah, here is really hot. So we are just absolutely feeling run down. Yesterday's rest day was hardly even enough because we got up and we still, even though we, got up you know we didn't rest all day we had vlogging she's been editing those videos to get them out for you guys so we've been busy 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 and I'm hoping over the next few days we can find a gym because I think that's the thing we're missing both the most right yeah I mean we're not bodybuilders by any means or anything but just getting in the gym and exercising releases them endorphins and we feel so much better afterwards so I think that's what we need since we've been on the trip we've only hit the gym once I think right yeah we went one day in Agadir, so there is a gym at our hotel. 
We decided for Fez we were gonna actually get a hotel and not a Riyadh because we wanted the the I gym. Experience both too, though. I want to be able to say I stayed in the Riyadhs and I stayed in a hotel. Right. I can compare them now. Yeah. And there's also a gym down the road from our hotel, so even if the hotel gym isn't that good, we're gonna go to the other one. So we should be feeling better in a few days. And then, well, we ain't got much time left here in Morocco. We got two more cities left. And then we're off to another North African country, which we're excited about. And then, of course, after that, we're going back to our favorite place in the world, Thailand, for a month. And we're real psyched for that, so let's see what we can eat, guys. Different vibe over here all together, right? Yeah. You can see the buildings are all newer, the hotels are all like recently built, and there are a lot of families and stuff, kids over here like on the other side, but not as chaotic. So, less of a carnival atmosphere. All right guys, so here we go. He made me special paella with chicken instead of poison, cat <laughs> fish. We got a plate of appetizers here that's uh, spinach, olives, and beets. And then over there, she's got her fish full of, salad full of fish over there. So, how is your salad? Good? It's good, yeah. Is it what you were hoping for? I thought it was going to be sardines, because when we had it in Nice, it was sardines. But here it's tuna, which oh, yeah. it tastes good. I don't mind and it. she complained there's not enough lettuce. I think she wanted the roughage in her, but it looks pretty I good. I mean, the tomatoes are good. They're really fresh. The cucumber was really fresh, and the cheese is amazing. It's like a fresh cut Parmesan. Oh, right. I wanted a photo of that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it back together so she could eat it. Take a picture in a minute. Let me just take a bite for these guys. That looks hot. Oh, that's hot. Um, <laughs> it's not only temperature hot, but it's loaded with green peppers, which... I don't mind the flavor of green peppers, but I'm so I'm be burping all night in bed, baby. <laughs> they just come back to repeat on me. And I just want to also notice that we're eating right here along the main strip in one of these fancy restaurants. So this meal is going to probably cost a little bit more than we've been spending. We found that when we eat in these restaurants like this, our dinners come out to about 15 to 20 dollars with our drinks and all. Whereas if we would eat in a street side local place, we could get away with about $10 for dinner for the two of us. So big difference, but we're enjoying the atmosphere and the special food that we got tonight. So we're going to finish this off and then we'll see you guys on the other side in a little while. So we're back on our side of the river now and it's just chaos. You can see around me. We just witnessed one of these little buggies run over a little girl over there. and <laughs> Traumatized her, I think. And then you can see over here we got some people playing music and it's not dying down at all. I say it's about 9 o'clock now and it's still going and it's not going to stop for a while. But it is a really amazing vibe. We love it here. It's been a super long day. We started out with you guys way early this morning. So we've taken you all over Rabat and we really hope you guys have enjoyed as much as we have. This is definitely going down as one of our favorite places. And uh, I think that's about it guys. We're going to go call it a night, get some rest, because tomorrow we're heading to another city. We're heading to Fez next, so if you want to check that out, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Leave us a comment if you could, thumbs up, give us one of them. We appreciate it, it'll help our channel. And if you want a postcard, just say so, we'll send you one. Put it in the comments and we'll make sure we get you a postcard, alright? Thanks for watching everybody, we really, really appreciate you guys.